Okay, okay, oh, shut up, shut up. Three, two, one. Hey guys, welcome to episode one of the Goon Squad podcast. I'm your host, I see Andy. I'm with Ethan. Yo. David. Yo, what's up? And Oscar. Yo, what's good? So, how's your guys' day? Dude, I've been pretty tired, bro. You're always what tired. You I'm always tired? Are you serious? No, I'm not. Yeah, you are. No, I'm not. You always sound so like monotone. You always sound like you want to kill yourself. <laughs> no. Dude, 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 do you need our fucking calls or gaming sessions at like 12 a.m. and you're like, I want to die. I think no. you should listen to our podcast. I don't know. You'll kill yourself less. Yeah, yeah. that's what I'm doing right now. <laughs> dude. Okay, so. Oh but lately, dude, I've actually been like, for me, I've been locked in my room just listening to music, man. Like, I'm fucking, I don't know. I, since quarantine, I, I've been so bored of literally everything. What are you no. listening to? Um, just a ton of like fucking. Oh, I'm gonna be honest, like a ton of white people shit though, like indie pop. Indie pop, dude. Like, are you are you disrespecting indie pop? Why are you give no, Why are you no, giving no, us no, that I'm tone? Saying, I'm talking to no, Oscar. No, I'm, I'm saying, talking to Oscar. Oh no, no, I'm just saying like who. Oh oh, I just listen to like Ho- Hobo Johnson, like fucking it's Mom Jeans here on the Sundays. Never like, heard of those people. Yeah, like fucking. I used to listen to hella rap like in middle school, but like. I don't know. Since when I moved to like Huntington Beach and like started hanging out with like white people, bro. Like no offense to white people, but like my music taste has definitely changed over the fucking years. Um, yeah, it's your environment. Back then, uh, fuck. Back then, I would listen to uh, my taste would fluctuate from R and B to rap because um it was like what I was exposed to, you know. And then as like high school like progressed. I started getting to like more genre genres of music, and mm-hmm. eventually I started listening to white people music too. And honestly, it's not even like something to be ashamed of. Like hey, let's 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 stop call, my bad, but let's stop calling it fucking white people music. But let's just say indie pop. There we go. Okay, that's what it's called. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I have, then, here's a question, dude. What are your current favorite artists right now? Honestly, my favorite artist has to be Drake because he's a classic artist. I would consider him a classic artist because he's been there for a while. I've been listening to him since elementary, since um, his song started from the bottom, now we're here. That song made me feel good. Not in a sexual way, maybe in a sexual way, but in a good way. Because that would just amp up my self-esteem and my energy. All of Drake's songs um, correlate with energy. That's what he... It's either energy... That he puts into his songs or Jamaican accent, that's what that's the two things I like, the Jamaican team, and his energy. Like let's say Marvin's Room, right? That's a that's a classic. Marvin's Room is the definition of your girl just left you and is talking to another guy and you want her back. Like that feeling of having a girl talk to someone that is um quote unquote better than you. That's just a feeling that um. That just brings you down by a lot, because in um when you're in a relationship, um she chose you because you are better than other guys basically, well most guys, like I'm not counting like celebrities because obviously fucking every like celebrity looks better than me. But all I'm saying is that like you don't want to know that there's a better guy than you, but once that relationship's over, and you see her with another guy, that just like brings you down now. And that's like that's the feeling that Drake's trying to portray. That got deep really quick. Yeah, Oscar, what's your fucking favorite artist? Dude, mine has got to be like Lil Uzi Vert, bro. It's Lil Uzi Vert. <laughs> Lil Uzi Vert. Dude, if I'm down and shit, and like I want to get my mood up, I just listen to him. It gets me hyped up. Okay, what about so- you, David? <laughs> <Dude>. <laughs> All right, so fucking Andy listens music to stay sad, and Oscar listens to music. Dude, to I don't listen to just music to stay sad, dude. Honestly, I respect it, man. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Recently, I've been listening to a lot of uh, sad music. Like right now, my current favorite artists are um, Seven Lines. Wait, David, can you be like a little bit louder? Oh yeah, I'm just I'm in my feelings, man. Dude, yeah, because I can barely hear you. Yeah. Dude, like I'm, dude, I'm right now. I'm listening to Marvin's room. 
Uh, hey, what is wrong with this guy? I kind of want to die. Okay, wait, let's start <laughs> over. On. Okay. Um, thanks for asking. Um, my currently my top two favorite artists are Seven Lions and The Weeknd. Seven Lions is like an EDM artist, and it, you know, it just always lifts my spirits up. Like, especially when I'm working out, like, it's like a high, and when I'm listening to Seven Lions, and for The Weeknd, it it brings me really down to earth. Like whenever I listen to um The Weeknd or another one of my favorite artists, Juice World. It just really makes me feel human and sad. And in my opinion, it's not really bad to be sad. In fact, we should feel happy that we're sad because that means we're able to experience emotion. And that's, you know, that's pretty beautiful. And if you are not able to experience emotion, I think you should be checked because that's um, a symptom of a sociopath. And I'm afraid you might <laughs> kill somebody. Bro. Please check yourself into asylum. Thank you. <laughs> like my all-time favorite album has to be Starboy by The Weeknd. There's so many good songs in that album. It's just, it's crazy. And currently, my favorite songs are Another Me by Seven Lions, Marvin's Room by Drake, and Drive By by Train. Those are pretty sad songs. I don't know. I've just, I've been Man, in the. Isn't The Weeknd just like about being sad and horny at the same time? Uh. And high. <laughs> Kind of, yeah, yeah. Do you like being sad and horny and high? Well, I've I haven't gotten high in a really long time, and um. And if you if you want to fucking talk about it, bro, because you fucking sound depressed. Yeah, you sound depressed. Dude, uh, that you music know, if you're going through something, you can just tell us. Not, not like it's just like the past few days have been kind of rough for me, you know. But um, I you, you just push through every day, and like um, it's like a tunnel, you know. Like right now, it's just darkness around you, but you always see a light around you. I hope you're doing okay, I'm man. Like, I'm being dead ass. Like, yeah. even though this is a podcast, like, I really want you to be okay. Yeah. yeah. Like, like right now, I imagine my life is like a roller coaster. Like, sometimes it's up, and sometimes it just goes, you know, down to the fucking ground. You know, what, people, always, people, people always say that, but, like, what kind of roller coaster? Because for me, it'll be Silver Bullet, because sometimes it'll be a thrill, and then it just breaks down. And when, it, when I mean it breaks down, I mean I break down. I think, I think the roller coaster that represents my life is um, accelerator at knots, cause um, I think in my opinion, I I'm a pretty emotional guy, you know. So I experience really happy happies and really sad sad. So I just feel like I'm constantly on a swing, you know, going up, going down, going up, going down. Okay, yeah, I guess. Um, honestly, if you experience your lowest lows, then you begin to appreciate the highest highs. That's what I think Definitely. life is. I think life is experiencing the lowest lows. Like, when you go back to, like, normalcy or, like, the equilibrium, like, you start to appreciate it. Like, you start to appreciate, like, being normal. You start to appreciate the smallest things, you know, like waking up and being able to drink a cup of water or eating your favorite cereal. Yeah, not everyone gets to experience that. And it's really sad because everyone deserves some type of, like, happiness or enjoyment. Everyone deserves a happy life. Yeah. Except Hitler. Okay, man. Okay, man. Okay, let's fucking move on. Um, my favorite artist isn't like anything like too down bad. I mean, um, my f- I think I have two favorite artists right now. My f- first favorite one is Mom Jeans. It's classified as the emo band, but I'd say they're more like pop punk, uh, kind of indie rock. Um, Mom Jeans was a band told to me by um a close friend I had like a year ago. Um, we kind of got into like a crazy argument, um, and we kind of dropped each other. Uh, so now like whenever I listen, it's it's a fucking banger of a of a band. Um, I love listening to their artist. I love listening to their songs. Um, but I can't stop like if I could thinking about her, so it kind of hurts every now and then. But it's kind of whatever. Um, an honorable mention of like my ser- my second favorite, um, artist is Sarah and the Sundays. It's like another indie rock band. Um, I don't know. Their music just like e- their e- music. They have music for like when I want to feel good, when I want to feel down. Oh, um, damn. That's kind of about it. Um, speaking of like songs that like make you think of someone, what's like that one song that makes you think of someone? Honestly, um, like this song means a lot to me, and it's another me. Like I said, it was my favorite song of all time. Another me by Seven Lions. So, like there's basically a backstory, right? So like the song, it's basically about like a guy, and it's a bunch of like 
like darner darner and it's like him talking about how like he did like the girl doesn't deserve him and he's gonna be better than everyone else um, and that song was important to me because about a year ago like um i got my heart broken and i listened to that song like every single day <laughs> i would you know like turn on my co- a shower like t- set it to cold ass water i'd fucking listen to that song every single day in the shower and it made me feel like some weird kind of way like i want to die but it's like I'm so motivated to live life, but when I, I'm so sad at the same time. Alright, um, my favorite song right now, um, or not my favorite song, but the song that means the most to me, um, kind of have two, I'm kind of indecisive, my first one, Sobs Quietly by Mom Jeans. I don't know, man, that song, like, again, it's not exactly, like, what's in the song, but it's kind of how I came about it. Um, I talked about how I came across Mom Jeans uh, by a girl, like, this girl was, like, the, like, it, we were pretty much the exact copy. Like either we were exactly on the same wavelength, or we were completely disagree. Um, and I thought this person would be someone I kind of like, um, not exactly be with, but kind of be like friends with, really, really close friends with. I'd tell her a ton of shit about my life. Um, but we kind of got in an argument. Um, again, that was completely my fault. That's a complete blame. Um, and this was kind of like her song that she showed me because. Um, I like listening to other people's songs. Um, I usually ask for Spotify, shit like that. So this song she gave me, and I've been listening. I've been listening to it like t- at least once every day. Um, not exactly think about her, but it's just a banger of a fucking song. Um, my second song is just "Crave Quarter" by Hobo Johnson. Uh, not too much meaning. It's just, uh, it's just a fucking good song. It's a good vibe song. You fucking listen to it, you get sad. You go, you go about with your day, um, and. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, to be honest, for me, it has to be Wife for Ari. Because, so basically the, basically, the premise of Wife for Ari is about the end of a relationship. And about how um, he basically get, just got out of like some toxic relationship. Honestly, Frank Ocean can have several different meanings. Um, but in this song, it talks about how him reminiscing about like the good times and shit how i found out about this song was basically just through spotify but i never really listened to frank ocean at that time like let's say i think it was sophomore year where or like before sophomore year is where i started listening to frank ocean because i think someone put me on frank ocean i don't know but i was talking to someone that time and i actually really liked her and we i would say that we got along until like there was this one point where i became really selfish and basically lashed out on her because of my ego and i don't know after that i started listening to like sad songs but this one particularly resonated because Near the end of the song, it talks about how, um, sorry, dude, I'm about to cry right now. It's just really emotional. But basically, yeah. she talk, it talks about how, um, he, in another, like, world or timeline, there they actually work out. And sometimes I just think about that, how if I didn't fuck up, then maybe we could have worked out. And there's this one line, it's like, that says, you dream of walls that holds us in prison. It's just a skull. At least that's what I they call it. We're free to roam. Basically, um, that image of a successful relationship just stays in your head. Is what keeps us from moving on. And even though it's a basically a prison, but we're we're free to roam that idea, and come up with all the possibilities. That, that, like, any part is the part where it just, like, makes me, up, like, cry, dude. And, like, I'll be honest, I still miss her to this day, but I know that she's happy now, and I've moved, I've been trying, I, I've moved on. So, yeah. I, um, I definitely know how you feel. Like, yeah. sometimes you can literally, like, you literally don't have a connection. Like, you have, like, anything, you don't have anything romantic with someone, but you have a connection, and you're sad over what could have happened. You know, instead of like, because in reality, nothing happened. But, you know, I've been sad about what could have happened, too. So I definitely know how you feel. 
it's like um i see this around like tiktok and twitter how like when if you have a dream about someone you just like have feelings for them you you know what i mean yeah i know what yeah you mean. like yeah. when i t- um back then like i would think about her a lot and that's like how i started developing feelings i see yeah sad yeah. what about you oscar what's your meaningful song Dude, mine is gonna be Martin G by Polo G. Like, Polo G can be. Oh my fucking god. Like, what? <laughs> you got Polo with that? <laughs> no, nothing, nothing. <laughs> yeah. This man said Polo G. <laughs> Polo G? <laughs> this guy all getting emotional over Polo G? No, you gotta listen to this song. This guy cries when he says, I'm gonna pump out your party, I'm with the gang. <laughs> Song, you idiots. <laughs> okay, continue. He's a dumbass. Okay, it's okay. It's my bad, my bad. <laughs> no, I, that's no, just you, wasn't what no, I was expecting. No, 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 no. No, it's fine. But yeah. How would you can get in your feels like really? I hope I your party. Yo. Okay, <laughs> Frank Ocean lover. When Frank Ocean can get sad, do you need to send me the song. Because when I, when I think of sad, dude, Polo G is definitely not the <laughs> <laughs> Talk about this. Fucking send me that song, bro. Alright, I will right now. I will right now. Okay. <laughs> yeah, alright. Oh. Um, so moving on. No, we just, Oscar's still not done, dude. No, Oscar's done. still not done. No, dude. You have to talk, talk, talk to us about Polo G. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. Sorry, sorry, Oscar. Dude, <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. No, dude, please, please. No. Yeah, please, brother. Please. Dude, no, tell dude. us about GBK how Polo G girl. makes you so sad. Yeah. Tell us about dude, how Polo G makes you emotional. Different, like, opinion yeah, yeah, I respect that. I respect that. I, I, I respect it too, but you gotta tell us, please. Dude, I did. No, you didn't. Because <laughs> I did. <laughs> you just said one song. Go, go, name. go, go, go in depth. Go in depth. What? Why does it make you feel? Is it the fucking meaning of the song, or like how you found the song? No, how I like connect to it, like personally. Okay, what's the song about? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> he doesn't even know. <laughs> Who's Martin Gina Oscar? Tell us. Who's Martin and Gina? Dude, it's based off a TV show. Really? A TV show couple. Okay, there you go. We're getting somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Keep bad. going. Increase the, the podcast link. And then, uh, it's about how, like, they argue back and forth. Wow. I mean, wow, yeah. Wow. Yeah, dude, I respect your choice. Just personally, I want to have Polo G at the top of my I'm fucking depressed playlist. Honestly, if, if Polo no, G would... I'm not, like, I don't get depressed at any song. It's just, like, Songs that like make me wanna like. I don't know, you fucking think about, psychopath. Like, psychopath. Honestly, if I were to put Polo G on a top sad song, no sad artist list, you'll be in my top. Uh, I say five thousand. And no, when I say listen to his song, when I say top five thousand, I mean at five thousand. Okay, no, send me the song. Yeah. We'll fucking. I'll, I'll okay, tell I you will, how. I will. Going. I will. I will. I actually do it right now. Okay. Alright, so do you guys want to move on or? Yeah. 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 Okay, okay. so moving on, let's talk about different topics. But on the topic, you know, like this kind of sad stuff, this kind of like personal deep stuff, let's talk about personal growth. Like, have you guys felt like you've grown, like, as a human? Yeah, so, um, freshman year, I would say, um, definitely freshman year, sophomore year were definitely the weirdest and worst points of my life. Um, I think freshman year, I did meet a lot of new people. I met Andy. Um, Andy invited me um, to go to Knott's one day. Didn't know who the fuck he was. Just randomly messaged me. You we, to to we were supposed to kiss. Whoa. Whoa. That wasn't supposed to be on the podcast. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm just kidding. We're keeping, we're keeping it in. No, we're not. Uh, yeah, but, but Andy invited me to go fucking to Knott's. Um, I didn't end up going, but uh, we went up at a Garn Grove game. He... Uh, kind of introduced me to a lot of new people um definitely uh, a lot of kids that i wouldn't say i'm close to today but it was a, definitely like uh, a pretty cool experience hanging out with them uh, freshman sophomore year went to a couple parties um but definitely f- those two years um i wasn't exactly the person i wanted to be um, i said a lot of things that kind of regret 
um, said. So definitely kind of insensitive stuff. Um, I mean, we all but it's, that. Yeah, it was kind of just it was a lot, just a lot of immature stuff. Um, but around I'd say last year, January, um, well, two months before quarantine, uh, there's a certain point in my life. There's a certain moment where I was just like, uh, I, I have no idea what the fuck I'm doing with my life right now. Um, and I need to take a fucking change if I want to be better. Uh, a lot of it was because uh, I want to take swim more seriously um, and a lot of sports in school. Uh, so around last year, I would say now, I've kind of I've kind of censored a lot of things I say and the ways I think. Um, and I've definitely been more open to more people. Um, I kind of like cutting people off who weren't specific benefits for me. Um, and were very uh, negative kind of influences on me. Yeah, I think we had a similar experience. So I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start like you. How I started. Okay, let's start at freshman year. Freshman year, I was. I think I. I only knew like LQ kids at first, and then that's where it started expanding out. I love meeting new people. Honestly, like. Meeting new people is basically a new experience for you, and you learn a lot about yourself and and about them. So I met Effie kids, West kids, Marina kid, basically every kind of kid. No, I'm not. I'm not like kid kid, but like no. like students, yeah, not kids. You guys popular, bro. No, shut up, dude. Okay. Um, with that popularity, because this is like when I was a freshman, right? Popularity got to my head, and that's where the downward spiral started. Basically, my first party it was it was a birthday party. I'm, I'm assuming it was this party, this party, and that's where I started meeting new people. Uh, I met there. I met there. I met there. But basically, that's where it all started. And with every party or, like, gathering you go to, I would say that your ego grows as you meet or hang out with more people. Because that's what happened with me. It could be different for everybody, but I'm just saying that's how I felt. That my ego grew tremendously. <laughs> Continuing on, um, I said a lot of, like, insensitive shit. I would hate people for no reason just because other people told me to. And I think a lot of things that pe- other people did, like, um, I started to adopt them because I, um, I wasn't used to hanging with a lot of people, right? So I would just um, try to fit in, you know? I would try to, like, say insensitive shit, like the N-word. And, like, I would just bully people for no reason. Like, I never knew them before. I would just bully them because... Other people would say that they're a piece of shit or that they did something in the past. But literally, like, if that's in the past, you know, they could be a new person. But I never got around to actually realizing that. Let's continue on to sophomore year. Basically, that's where, like, I met, like, tons of new people and started, like, considering a relationship, like, a serious relationship. But my habits still remain, my bad habits still remain, like, saying insensitive shit and shit and stuff but i i would say it dialed down a bit but still i was looking for that attention and looking f- because i was not tired of um meeting new people like i in a way i i had i was like addicted to that attention of being icy andy i believe that popularity is a double-edged sword because in one in one way you're known by everybody and that there's certain people that want to talk to you and shit and it kind of boosts your ego but on the other hand it doesn't really mean anything at, at a certain point and sometimes you're not you're popular for like the wrong reasons i still like shit on people like people um that other people hated and it was so it was also sophomore year where i got I finally got a reality check of everything I'd done and how much of a piece of shit I was. And that was when I started to re- reevaluate everything, reflect on all the bad things I did, and finally start becoming a better person. Honestly, shout out to my neighbor, Jamie, because she helped me get through this shit. And, and uh, this is funny, but... Um, 
Raymond Ray Tran Tran Ray also helped me through this shit. Like shout out to him too. Like um he's done some cringy ass shit, not gonna lie, but a fucking respect to him, dude. Because not everyone was there for me. Like the sh- the people that I've been with my whole like whole f- high school life or m- even like my whole life weren't there for me. But that guy, we barely met and he he's um supported me through everything. And my neighbor, too. Fuck, dude. Respect to both of them. But now, I believe that... No. Now, I stopped saying the N-word, obviously. I chose to respect other people, even if I don't know them. Also, I've been constantly improving myself because I want to be a better person. And there's not a lot I can really do to make up for all the things I did in the past, but... You can only just look to the future because what what happens in the past is the past. But you can only affect the present and the future, you know? Also, I want to, like, publicly apologize to Elaine and, yeah, Elaine and, like, a couple other people for just shitting on them for freshman year. Like, that was really insensitive of me. Like, I regret all of that now. And I should have just apologized earlier, honestly. But I guess... An apology is better than no apology, you know? But yeah, I'm really sorry for what I had to... uh, What I put you through. Nah, move on to me. I don't know why, but I... Me and my friends just feel like pouring our hearts out on this podcast. So let me me tell you about, like, one of my greatest struggles. That was with my um, confidence, my self-esteem. And um, it was a lifelong problem. I don't know why, but as long as I can remember, I've always had, like, this really, like really bad feeling of like insecurity and insignificance you know and um you know i never really knew how bad it was until um recently like i um i have a girlfriend and she actually pointed it out to me and it was like mind blowing like wow like i'm not like this isn't normal you know this feeling the the shitty feeling is normal i've been um i've been trying to improve on it every day and um my life story is basically this Back when I was little, I was um I was a social outcast, you know. I didn't really have any friends, like all the way up until like what middle school. That's that's probably what led to my um my my low self esteem, you know. It's being a, being a social outcast sucks. Wait, wait, can I cut in real quick? Yeah, bro. Um, yeah, I can uh, I can relate to being a social outcast because, um, back in. I say like around elementary, like I didn't have that many friends I was close to, and like I had like barely any social interaction, which is why like as like middle school and like early high school progressed, like I didn't know how like really talk to people, you know, yeah. and I just adopt like uh, like I never had like that sen- like the idea of sen- self identity, so I'll just like copy what other people did, and that's what. That I'm not gonna blame anyone, everyone for like all my actions, because all all that all those actions were thought of by me. But I just wish that I came in terms of who I really who I was, and became who I wanted to be. Earlier. Yeah, I can I can definitely relate, and um, as I transition into uh, middle school. It was, I remember, I was seventh grade. I, I met some people, a group of people. Like, they became, like, my first real friends, you know? Mm-hmm. But, like, what Andy said, I, um, I had, I was really desperate to fit in. I would do anything just to have a good, close, t- close-knit group of friends. You know? Just, like, one drop of clout. Not even, not even clout. Just, like, a feeling of friendship. Just, like, a feeling of being wanted, you know? Mm-hmm. That wasn't my family. And, um... So, you know, like, that one guy that, like, everyone in the group roasts? Yeah. Yeah, that was fucking me, man. Like, it, it, I'm kind of ashamed to admit it, but that was, that was fucking me for a good, what, three years? Three, four years? And even more? I don't even remember. I don't even know. But that was me. And um, that, that like, dude, like, that made my self-esteem just so much worse. Like, they were my friends, and, and like, they're pretty good friends, you know? But just being ragged on constantly, just... Like, I didn't know it, but subconsciously, like, it wore me down so much. Like, literally, like, I didn't even have the confidence to even, like, 
go outside my house or to, like, to talk to new people. And I just felt really shitty, you know. Like, they would always roast me about how I was, like, fat. Because I, I, I am, like, a bigger, a person of bigger stature, you know. I'm, I'm like, pretty tall, pretty, um, pretty, uh, big. Like, no, I know. I know how that feels. Really, people call me yeah. that shit every day. No, me, you, me and, me and you are going to go to the fucking gym and get buff, dude. We're going to become no. fucking, like, buff-ass, buff-ass fuckers and wreck shit. But, um, yeah, and it was, um, actually, and moving on, like, it was an, at an all-time low in, like, sophomore year, you know, like, soft, like, I don't know why, but when quarantine happened, like, everything just, like, went downhill for me, you know, like, I started smoking weed every like, almost every single day like every t- every day every time i hung out i i literally developed anxiety because of nicotine and it's just it's so crazy how like just like you know a few puffs here and there can really like right? you know start to change and like really warp your life you know what i mean yeah like nicotine was the first thing that i got hooked on and it basically it made me more paranoid and it made me more anxious about my surroundings and then that progressed to marijuana. That am I? Are we allowed to talk about this? Because we're minors. Does it matter? Dude, who I says we're minors? Yeah. I mean, we're eighteen. What are you talking about? Okay. Anyways, um, so marijuana, right? Um, I think my first time trying marijuana was at someone's New Year's party. Um, uh-huh. we went to a park, and I smoked it out a. Stizzy, I think. Yeah, it was a stizzy. And at first, I thought I was like, "Is it?" And then it kicked in that high, you know, that that yeah. wave and shit. And then I, I after that, I like, at first I was like, never doing that shit again, you know. But then, at party after party, then I just started doing it more, and it became a worse. Like my addiction became worse. Where I told myself that I would never buy like a stizzy or like pen right and then i bought one and every day like if i ever get sad or like want to forget about something i just smoke and that was a terrible way of dealing with your emotions because it just piles you know in a pile it piles up on you and then we it just it gives you a temporary like happiness and you're so used to that that if you don't if you don't um receive it then you start like um freaking out and shit and it got to a point where i just like ask people for their shit or like be easily convinced to smoke same thing with alcohol too my first time trying alcohol was at ethan's bonfire it was fireball and i thought it would be cool to chug the chug the whole thing and that was so bad because fireball is like cinnamon flavor, right? Imagine doing a cinnamon challenge, but like in liquid form. Wait, hold on, hold on. Let's get this straight really quick. It, it was my bonfire, but I didn't provide the fire. No, you did. Someone else brought it. Yeah, we're gonna get that. We're gonna get that straight. No, no, no. Your bonfire was like, uh, PG. You know. PG. And then two people, yeah. and then two people decided to make it PG thirteen. A lot of people decided to make it fucking rated hard. <laughs> yeah, um, and for mature, <laughs> not rated E for everybody. Okay, but anyways, then I started my alcohol problem, and holy shit, that was so bad because I also use alcohol to deal with my problems. I think one of my friends would know because when I would get sad, I'll tell her that I'll fucking like. I'm going to start drinking on this shit, on, like, whatever was in, like, the alcohol cabinet. And I, she would try her best to stop me, but, you know, I was stubborn, so I just drank it. And, yeah, like, and whenever I don't have it, like, I just, like, freak the fuck out. But I'm glad that I stopped doing all that shit. Honestly, drugs and shit made me, made me a lot dumber. And I was failing a lot of my classes, but now Dang. since I stopped doing like drugs and alcohol, I've been doing really well in my classes, and I've been be I've been more motivated to do a lot of things and be more productive in life. I'm glad to hear that, bro. Yeah, yeah. never, um, never doing a pod ever again. Those fucking dude. 
I'm gonna be honest, vape designs look so stupid. Like, what was that square shape? Does anyone remember? Puff bar? No, no, not puff bar. Puff bars Soarin were in air. Yeah, Soren. The Soren line. Oh my god. Drop. Yeah, Soren. Okay, no, Soren drop was like a teardrop thing. Really? Wait, was it? Is Wait, it was a teardrop, right? What was a sword? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sword and air too. Sword and air looks so dumb, and uh, I was so surprised how people could hide that shit so easily. It's literally like a, like a square. It's a square, basically. But kind of going into that, like I'm not gonna say anything self-incriminating, but um, I said how like there was a point sophomore year around like January, um, last year where I kind of like turned everything around. Um, it was at bonfire. Um, might have done some things I uh, kind of regret, but uh, there's a point where I don't know why. Um, I would say I was used to it by then, but this time, um, my anxiety ran through the roof. Um, I got home, I was on the fucking, I just passed out. <laughs> um, and I woke up and I was just like, dude, this, I, I can't keep fucking living my life like this. And um, I think that's the major motivation for me to change. Um, I take a lot of pride from like where I was then to where I am now, um, but that's kind of like my experience with that type of stuff, um, and that's my main motivation. I would like to share my experience with that. It all begins with the mindset change, like how you always like you're you're like this is one time, you know, just a try, you know, and then I'll never do it again. And <laughs> then over time, your mindset changes to something more along the lines like. I'll do this like every once in a while. I'll do this with my friends, just to, like fit in, you know, be happy. And then it slowly, you know, it slowly evolves more and more into independence. And that that was basically me. Like I used to, I used to vape only with my friends. You know, I would like ask them for like their, their little thingy, and I would like I would take um a little puff, I would suck it. You know, it felt good. Like it does feel good. But then over time, I. I started to buy my own, you know. I started to like develop an a dependence, not exactly addiction, because I wasn't addicted, but it was a dependence for it. I would like, crave it every day. Like in bed, I would just scroll my phone, and like, just smoke that, and it's it's just so bad for you. But I don't know, man. It sounds like an addiction. Yeah. <laughs> and it does. <laughs> and um, I like to point out like there's this stigma around like drug use. But like, it's there for good reason. But I feel like you shouldn't look down on other people for like using drugs. You know, like, let's say, um, for example, like when I used to smoke weed, like a lot of people look down on me, and I don't know. I still don't know how I feel about that. You re- you guys remember when holding blinkers was like the cool thing, where, um, you huh. smoke the um pen till it starts blinking red, and then you just like hold it all in. Like, everyone thought, like, oh, if you didn't do a schism, then you're fucking pussy, you know? Um, and basically, even the pen told you that shit was bad, because it was blinking fucking red, telling you to stop. Yeah. Like, personally, I could never do a blinker. And that's why I, like, always, like, refuse to do it. I would just take, like, small inhales. I would never do a fucking blinker. Okay, but m- moving back to the topic of, like, you know, my, 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 um, my slow self-esteem, because we went kind of off track. But, um, yeah, about my self- low self-esteem. So, you know, I was always, like, that guy that, like, got ragged on. Like, the guy that, like, always got, like, shit on. Mm-hmm. But, like, that changed this year. And it was so crazy. Like, the way that, like, I opened my eyes. It was one time, right? I was hanging out. And it was um, my friends and I, my girlfriend and her friend. And um, I was getting, like, I was getting, like, pretty i was getting roasted a lot you know that day it was like a halloween like a halloween get together with like maybe like six people i roasted a lot you know and then i remember like after after the hangout my girlfriend she talked to me and then she's like david are you okay i'm like what like why are you asking me that you know i'm i'm, I'm fine i'm normal and then she was like oh because it seemed like you weren't you your friends like your friends are being really mean to you today and I was like, no, like I, I was rationalizing it to myself. I was making excuses. I was like, no, nah, that's normal, you know. Like that's just our relationship, you know. But I thought about that for several days, and it it opened my eyes. I was like, damn, like 
do I do I really get treated like this like all the time? And I just slowly distance myself from them and well I made new friends with my friends that I'm with right now. Yeah, and you don't shit on a, David. Yeah. It's 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 a long process. It's a long process of building yourself building your confidence up i'm not saying my low confidence was just because of, of my old friends but it was um it was a part of it it definitely contributed to the entire problem but yeah, i'll um, bully him until he runs down my league games <laughs> yeah. okay but um like it was it's su- it was super slow like my girlfriend she really she helped me through this a lot you know like literally before i was i was so scared to like talk to her family you know like i would literally be like uh, like Zhao Ju, you know, like so, like you know, like that wimpy voice, and I, I've <laughs> really been proving on it. Like every, like every day, you just have to like be set on like improving yourself. And I, I went through a phase where I read a lot of articles online, and I came across some really good advice to um for everyone that is in, maybe in the same position as I am. Fake it till you make it. <laughs> like, you fake your own confidence until. It's internal, you know, yeah. until you feel good. The most important thing that I've learned for inner confidence is to always be working on something, especially yourself. If you work on yourself, you feel good about it. And when you like, when you feel good about yourself, you build confidence. You build like that. I'm happy, you know. Yeah. When you feel good about yourself, like confidence, like naturally it comes with it, you know. Mm-hmm. Oh. For me, it was um. A really long, a really long process. I literally still have like, I still struggle with it every day, but my philosophy for life it's like um it's like climbing a mountain, you know like every day like not like, crawling a mountain is like not the right. It's like it's more like c- crawling on the in the dirt. Like let's say for like you're a worm, like people step on you, like th- it doesn't rain, so like. It's not ideal for you, like basically, like a lot of, you know, a lot of roadblocks, a lot of bad things come your way. But no matter how like how hurt you are inside, how much you want to fucking die, like you just have to keep like moving forward. Even if it's only like a millimeter, it's better than yesterday. That's my philosophy, you know. Like no matter how shitty I feel, like no matter how much I want to die, like I always try to move just the slightest bit forward every single day. And that has be like that has made me who I am right now. Just keep moving forward. Yeah. yeah. You, even if you take a step backward, it's completely fine. In my opinion, it's completely fine to take a step backward. Literally, I quit. I tried to quit smoking two or three times. I would be going good for several months. Then I would smoke. I would fry my brain. I would smoke so much fucking marijuana and nicotine. And I thought, you know, all hope was lost. But even though you can take, you can even though you take a step backwards, you can always take another step forward. And that's like kind of like the story of who I am, like the story of that specific aspect of, of my life. Story yeah. of David. Story of Dank. <laughs> <laughs> the story of everybody, Oscar. honestly. Oscar, what, what about you, bro? You haven't been yeah, talking. To be honest, I feel like the worst. I mean. The lowest part of my life was my sophomore year. Like, and that's where I started listening to Polo G. Polo G saved my life. Okay, okay, go, go, Oscar. What is wrong with this guy? Dude, Oscar, go. (laughs) Dude. Okay, so, like I was saying, sophomore year was like the lowest point of my life because. Okay, during the time I was in a relationship with someone and things ended like really bad terms and I just regret every like single thing I've done like bad to her like makes me want to like kill myself because I made her like feel that way Jeez, the way she is but you know that's that's how it is move on Move on and listen to Polo G. Yeah. <laughs> Do it. Uh, to be honest, um, I used to not like Oscar because of other people, but like as like 
time goes on and like I actually got to know he's like a pretty like amazing person and he's like like a the fucking dumbass sometimes but like yeah. <laughs> no actually he's a dumbass all the time but <laughs> but <laughs> but like dude he's a good friend guys yeah, yeah. like dude Oscar is a super good friend and actually I feel the same like never I've learned to never judge someone off what other pr- people say like. I used to think that and that Andy was the most cringy motherfucker to ever <laughs> exist. I mean, shut your bitch ass up. <laughs> <laughs> I literally, I literally remember it like talking to my old friends. Okay, cut that, cut out that about old friends. Okay, I remember I was literally talking to people about how like your parties, you try to like set up parties, and every time they fucking sucked ass. Dude, shut <laughs> up, dude. I regret having this every party. Was a party. Bust. Yeah, oh, and like I remember one time, like, yeah, but this guy's, well, this guy's about to start like, like after, roasting me. After personally meeting Andy, like, dude, this guy is like, he's changed, you know, like, dude, this guy's like yeah. the nicest person ever. Yeah, he's like, Andy's like one of the most understanding people I've ever met, you know. Yeah, um, especially like I can say the same thing for Oscar, dude. In in middle school, I used to think Oscar is the biggest fucking loser. <laughs> <laughs> As I met Oscar this year, like, dude, Oscar is one of the most like chillest people you'll ever meet. You know, it's just you you learn, like I've learned to never judge people, like off of others' experiences, and I think everyone can definitely learn a, t- a thing or two about you know judging other people. And honestly, if um you had a bad experience with them, there's still room to change for them to change. You know, exactly. never um. You shouldn't always give up on someone because of, of one bad experience. You should always just give them a chance. Unless they fucked you up that bad, then maybe don't give them a chance, you know? Yeah. But for the most part, uh, a lot of people deserve second chances. Yeah. Um, it's like how you guys all run down my games, and then I can- Dude, it. shut up. You went 0-16 with <laughs> Twisted Fate. 16. 0-16, 16, by watch, the way. It was, a new, it was a new build, bro. I went six Dorn Shields, man. Like, relax. Dude, what is wrong with this guy? Yeah, what is wrong what is with wrong you, with man? 0-16? You too. You too. <laughs> what do you mean? They're just dude, what decent. You, I consistently fucking do most damage or suck my cock, bro. Consistent damage? Oh, yeah, 0-16. And you guys just fucking run it down. <laughs> dude, I didn't run it down. I was a fucking Yumi. Okay, okay, okay. That game was a fucking exception. Okay, that game got me no, so tilted. Wasn't. Yes, I literally that ran it down maybe you. like one other time. Bro. Okay, everyone, I have something to share. Oscar is the most delusional fucking no. leak. <laughs> Oscar, you're fucking delusional. You think you, you think you're so fucking good, but your heart stuck bronze. Wait, he's a silver. To the, to the game. You, you consistently you like go negative KDA in, in my game. I'm not the best player in the world, but I'm yeah, better than what fucking you, say. you, bro. You I carry you with you, me. I'm the best jungler in the world. Yeah, yeah. it's just a joke, bro. Just, Dude, yeah, and I say that as a joke, too. <laughs> this guy says he's the no, best, the and then loses to another Yasuo. <laughs> The thing is, Oscar, I pop off. You never pop I off. I do <laughs> pop off. Dude, the only time you, I see you pop off You guys off run it down mid and ruin my game. <laughs> <laughs> no? What? Yeah. David, do you ever pop I off when you're going against another Yasuo? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, please don't remind me of that game. I'm actually gonna get so tilted. There's, an, there's always a better Yasuo. Yeah. Yeah, there's another... Dude, you actually, and I can probably play better than him. Yeah. <laughs> Shut your mouth, Oscar. Let's, let's get a 1v1 going. You, you can't even see as as Ezreal correctly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. okay, but um, let's say... uh, Do you guys want to wrap things up? Yeah, you can wrap this cock up. Yeah. Dude, Dude, he's that's, that's staying in the video, by the okay, way. Okay, but anyways, yeah, let's, let's, um, let's wrap this podcast up. Thank you, everyone, for listening, you know. If you took the time to listen to this entire podcast, listen to, like, our thoughts and feelings, like, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, If you like this fucking YouTube video, we'll invite you to go gooning with us one day. Also, a shout-out uh, to uh, Kayla Rios for putting me on Claro. Um, Forever is literally the best song that anyone's ever made, and... If anyone shits on that song, then I'm a shit in your mouth, basically. What song? What? Forever by Clara. That shit's oh, I amazing. That is, I, I kind of like the song, but I kind of wanted you shit in my mouth, bro. Man, it makes Polo my G. ass ting- tingle every time she sings. Listen to Polo G. Oh, of course, you only listen to Polo G. What, what, what does he call his fans? 
Polo Jeers. Polo Jeers. Polo Okay, but uh, yeah, let's just wrap this up. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Um, have a great day. Yeah, bye, guys. Cut.